it going, everybody? Be Rad the Pilot. Just got back from Florida. The U-Haul's returned. The airplane is inside. I'm gonna dive in and start inventorying and basically getting a good feel for where all the parts are at. Check it out. your fuel caps <laughs> I wonder if you could have found something more obvious like say the engine it goes here and these are the fuel pickup points right here along with the strainer so this guy will actually go on into the lowest point they call this a fuel bowl uh, here's the rear tail section that's missing. Back there by a trash can. You got a cowling. One, only one of these. Yeah, not the end of the world there for missing one. It's easy to make another one. Uh, moving on to the rest of the airplane. That's right. There's like these sheet metal pieces inside of here. I wonder what they went to. A lot of the wiring is hanging out. It's for fuel. A couple other pass-throughs. Uh, I did gather um, just from evidence on the firewall that it does appear that an engine was installed at one point. And they probably fired it up. Um, here's the interior cleaned out a lot of the just parts were just stacked in here really heavy. Uh, the controls actually uh, are fully functioning. It's gonna seem crazy, but the controls actually do in fact do control things. How, oh yeah, how do I show that? There we go. So you can see this guy right here. And that guy as well. Even your flaps which I'm not a huge fan of the manual flaps, but here's a manual flap handle here. You haven't even told anybody what this is. Some people don't know that this is even an airplane. It's missing a lot of parts. Uh, yeah, the horizontal self in it, self section. Ugh. Works there. Even the rudder as well, which really nasty looking. Oh, that's because the pads fell off. So even the trim, the trim is actually hooked up as well. Let's see if I can pull it up. And onto the tail. This is where most of the relevant hanger rash has occurred. I'm gonna walk around the other side. Oh yeah, even the wiring for the tail light. Like this guy was it like the 90% finish mark. And yeah, it's just crazy to me. I'm not a huge fan of acrylic. Um, I'm a big fan of the MR10. It looks like he was getting ready to start doing the interior stuff. Like these are the temporary panels, like foam board, so you can get everything mapped out. And 
Yeah, here we are. So some of the hangar rashes took place. There's some dents on this thing. Some bent skins. Most of the stuff we can bend out. Like, I'm not worried about that. But there are some pieces that come in the servo tab here. That's gnarly. Oh, awesome bird. Maybe, I mean, today's still pretty early, but maybe I could probably hook this thing up to power. Power? Bro, you hook that up to power right now, and it's gonna release all of the magic smoke. It is not going to be good. And see what turns on and what comes to life, you know? That would be really cool. <laughs> My guess, seeing that, is probably not a lot. But it'll be interesting to see, nonetheless. What is this? Cigarette lighters? <laughs> okay, all right. No, it's legit when it's got an airspeed indicator that goes above 200 knots. Dude, I bet you money that this attitude indicator does not go bonkers. These actually look like really good gauges. Have this on the other side, because there's nothing over there actually. I was gonna put like a refrigerator so you could just like throw some steaks in there. Man, where are you at now? All right, so as I'm taking inventory of all this stuff, there's definitely some things missing. I'm missing one flap as I have found out. And realistically, I'm not a huge fan of the flat. It's really heavy when it should be a lot lighter. Because of that, I'd probably leave, uh, not happen to rebuild the flat, but, or I'd order another one. Unfortunately though, the company that made them is called TVAP. So I've learned, it's an all metal wing, which is, really cool that's what i wanted if i couldn't get factory the, the factory built honeycomb wings this would be my second option because i've read that the <laughs> fiberglass wings leak the fuel really aggressively so i don't want anything to do with that so it looks like all the plans are here um including some that i haven't seen so that's great. Uh, I also have the book. This guy right here. And this is all of the information on TBAB. Shows how to build their flap system. So I'm not a huge fan of that flap system, so I'm gonna essentially go back to the original flap design. So I actually took this thing off, off camera. <laughs> Unfortunately, I was, I was curious to see uh, what was below this and um, I hinged it off already, but this thing is all pretty dang heavy for one hand. Like I'm probably gonna drop it. I don't wanna drop it. <laughs> it's uh, relatively heavy though. And it's super thin, which is really cool, but way heavy. So I think what I'm going to do is, since I only have one of them, not even worry about it. I'm gonna cut off the section that needs to be removed in order to switch it over to a conventional flap and basically build two of those and the wings are pretty much ready to be mounted up. Really, b run Is that all you need and the wings just go right on? You've clearly thought this through. We'll wait and see. I have my pedo tube with the angle of attack. I have 
electrical wire that goes on the inside, which I'm not a huge, huge fan of the wire that was used. I'm gonna switch it out for some shielded wire. I think that would be a much better approach to it. But there is so many parts. We got the fuel bowls, which look bigger than the factory ones. Uh, I'm not opposed to that. Um, the other issue that these aircraft have had to overcome, which I'm pretty sure they all have, same as one person had the issue, was fuel starvation uh, during takeoff or steep angles of attack because the airplane could really climb out, I guess. So. This, is a, this is the 100 grand section this way. Everything built off of here, the 100 grand section. And yeah, really, uh, there is quite a substantial amount of componentry that's missing. Um, so not the end of the world though. That's what aircraft spruce and all those uh, aircraft part suppliers are out there for. I'm like, I can literally only remember one. Like, oh, Chief Aircraft? Wait, are they RC? That's where there's Amazon, you know, those, those places. Uh, but we got one wing that's about 80% there. And then we got this wing, which is maybe 25 to 30% there. It's missing a lot of different componentry. And then we got the interior, which has much to be desired of as well. What? No percentage on the interior? People might want to know. Is it 50? Is it 80? I feel like you could make up a number just like you could for the wings. Um, I did find some joysticks that appear to be aviation grade. I'm not sure how I feel about them yet, but they look good enough, they look good enough. I'll probably leave them in and use them. I did notice that the uh, fuel routing inside of there is, is modified, so I'll have to look into that. This is the BD4 uh, B model, and um, you can tell because it doesn't have a little crunch there in the back. Crunch? Like the candy bar? Why is everything a candy reference with this guy? Seriously. And virtually it's a standard BD-4B back here, just with T-BAP wings, which they don't exist anymore, so. Yeah, yeah, we, we know, we know. Next. Anything that is missing, I either gotta ask on the forum or build it without any sort of documentation as to what those parts are. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to basically revert the wings anywhere that is missing something or doesn't have the correct componentry. We're gonna revert it to standard BD4 B model wings. There's even some cowling parts uh, it's missing an engine, obviously. I only got one wheel fairing, not the end of the world. I hope we won't use a wheel fairing because this winter time is quickly approaching and by the time I want to fly this thing, it'll likely be in the winter time. So that is all there is to that. As far as componentry that's missing, I broke everything down into segments of firewall forward, uh, fuselage, empennage, wings, um, and then systems, like uh, control systems, uh, brake systems, all that stuff. I broke everything down, itemized everything that was missing out of those sections, and I'm just gonna tackle each individual section, the hardest, most difficult ones being first, and the easy ones being last, or my thoughts of what the easiest ones would be being last. Definitely gonna be converting it from conventional gear. Oh, look at me, I used it right. Uh, conventional gear versus tricycle gear. Ooh, you know there's gonna be backlash over that one. You know there is. You know it. Can't just say that. 
and we're gonna put on actually i'm not even gonna tell you what the motor is i'm not gonna tell you what the motor is gonna be that's gonna be a surprise so as you guys start following be listening for that i might spill the beans on accident but uh, i just heard it through through the youtube video no it's not a pratt and whitney holy smokes i felt like that was the next thing everybody's like it's gonna put a pratt and whitney on there pt6 it's gonna be great no absolutely not well shoot b right you don't leave us very many options it's not a pratt and whitney there's only got to be a handful of engines left that you could choose from. Suitable for this application. I can only think of several. I bet you know I know. Wait a second. Yeah, I really look forward to getting after this. Now that I've got it here and it's unloaded, I'm going to now get together a budget of each individual segment. Like I was telling you how I broke everything down. All I had was pictures to go off of, and it looks like for the most part, the flaps were the only thing that kind of threw me off. I expected there to be the other flap, because I wanted to just leave it stock and get it airworthy. That was the highest priority. But from the most part of what I was seeing in the pictures, I knew what I was getting myself into. So it's not always the case. A lot of times you'll get to an airplane and you fly all the way out to Florida and you realize that you're about to make a horrible mistake if you buy it. So, um, which ultimately, if it did turn into that, I'd have just jumped back on an airplane and flew back. But in this case, rented a U-Haul, drove all the way from Florida to Utah, and now it's here, ready to get finished up. So, without further ado, cue the time lapse of the notepad where I document everything that needs to be purchased and take lots of pictures. Boring crap's done. Maybe it's fun. Boring crap is done. Next step, get that all digitized. My massive list. It's over there, it's over there. My massive list of items uh, that I've noticed, and this is very surface level, I was just basically doing a full inspection. Was there wire? Is there pitot tube? Is the pitot tube connected? Checked those sort of things. Really simple stuff. Um, I also have noticed quite a few different things that were missing uh, in, in addition to what I was visually seeing from the pictures. So I'm sure that list will continually grow. I mean, just this part right there. This is a TVAP wing specific thing. And I would like to just keep it that way because it's already worked before for other people. Um, I don't want to go reinventing the wheel. But again, if I do have to, I'll just divert back to the original plans. Not that that's my ideal situation, but yeah, you can see just how critical that piece is. So there's a control tube that goes all the way through the wing. A lot of neat little things that I didn't see in the photos. There's NACA air scoop, which isn't typically installed. Um, an antenna on the bottom, which I don't even know what that goes to. I already removed the ELT antenna to bring it back. Now that I got a good solid understanding of what the airplane's missing, what's the plan of action will be pretty much going to be putting a lot of focus onto the wings and getting those uh, airworthy as soon as possible though. We can get them mount, them up, mount it up and get those fuel lines connected and check the wing tanks for leaks because that is going to be a pretty important step. And there's only one way to do that. Unless you guys know of a different way. By then I'll probably be past that by the time you guys are like, oh, you should have just did it the easy way. 
I'd be like, man, if I only thought to do it the easy way. Yeah, good stuff. A little bit of abrasion on the front windshield during travel. I should sand right out. Yeah, you know, buff it. Buff it right out. Yikes. Okay. Anyways, I'm going to get back after this stuff, guys. I will see you guys real soon.